talking to me about healing through belief. You're a man looking at the world through a keyhole, and you've spent your whole life trying to widen that keyhole, to see more, to know more, and now, on hearing that it can be widened in ways you can't imagine, you reject the possibility. No, I reject it because I do not believe in fairy tales about chakras or energy or the power of belief. There is no such thing as spirit. We are made of matter and nothing more. You're just another tiny, momentary speck within an indifferent universe. You think too little of yourself. Oh, you think you see through me, do you? Well, you don't. But I see through you! Hello and welcome everyone to the Marks Review, Doctor Strange. I'm Matt. I'm Shane. And we're going to review this piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> So, currently right now, <laughs> okay, now that we paused and collected ourselves, <laughs> we were well, actually going to break this down. I was just kidding. That was just my rough intro. <laughs> for yeah, the, for just, just jumping out there. First, we want to talk about the Rotten Tomato score. Currently, right now, it had the tomato meter has a 90% for Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. Currently, this is November 4th, Friday, 2016. Right now, it sits at an audience score of 90%, so it's looking good for Doctor Strange, mm -hmm. that piece of shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on, both, on both the critic and the audience, uh, yeah. which, which a lot of movies that I've seen, that's uh, they don't draw too many parallels. I think Civil War was one where they it's, were both real close to each other. Right. It might drop. It might go up. Um, mm -hmm. It's obviously got a lot of time to right. still yeah. This is uh, after one day. stuff, so it could go down to who go who knows what can happen. It can go down. It could go up. Right. Who knows what happens? Currently, right now, the synopsis for Rotten Tomatoes, uh, their critic consensus, is Doctor Strange artfully balanced its source material against the blockbuster constraints of the MCU, delivering a thoroughly entertaining superhero origin story in the bargain basket. <laughs> I don't know what in the bargain I added basket so I don't know what in the bargain means they're using fancy words so we went to the <laughs> dumbass site to get a dumbass synopsis of the movie Shane take it away all right I am Demi from the dumbass a former neurosurgeon embarks on a journey of healing only to be drawn into the world of the mystic arts and scene done <laughs> that's it cut <laughs> uh, wrap it up <laughs> so you got Rotten Tomatoes' overly complicated synopsis or consensus of the movie and IMDb's fucking fourth grade level. It's seriously, <laughs> pretty basic. Uh, if it means anything to anyone, I got an 8 out of 10 on, on IMDb, on their rating system. Also has a 72 Metascore. I have no idea what that means. Metascore is like Rotten Tomatoes, but they're a little bit more... Realistic? Yeah. <laughs> For the most part. They're, they're closer to what fan ratings are usually. Than Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. Because Rotten Tomatoes is jacked up scoring system. Right. So even huh. though Rotten Tomatoes gets more praise for okay. some reason. Right. First we're gonna we're gonna break down and get and this is gonna be a spoiler version for anybody that's wondering. Completely <laughs> yeah. spoilers. We're not gonna go into a spoiler free thing. If you like Marvel movies, go watch it. Yeah. It's right yep, up your alley. Much. Yep. If you like those, it's definitely the movie for you. Check it out, watch it, enjoy it. Uh for us that are more realistic on Marvel movies. <laughs> we're going to give a quick, not a quick, we're going to give a review of the movie and give us what we liked and disliked about the movie. But first we're going to give a quick summary of how the movie went down. Yep. All right. I'll do the summary. <laughs> I panicked. <laughs> <laughs> we're still thinking about it. And first off, I want to say that there's, we're not trying to already talk shit about this movie in any fashion. No. Or anything like yeah. that. I personally went into it very excited, actually. I, I did, too. The, the trailers, I, I guess that's a good place to start before <laughs> before we get into the synopsis. But the trailers for this were, were awesome. Right. That eventually gets into my issue with the movie, but uh, I felt that this was going to be different. I was I was pumped for this movie. I, I went in just waiting to finish out the year strong, I guess, before Star Wars and, you know, and excited. Yeah, no, to finish out the year of comic book movies right. for the most part. I, I was really excited for this. We've had an up and down year so far of comic book movies. This was the concluding one. This is the big one. Yep. This is a weird, obscure character. I remember the last time they did weird characters. 
other than Ant-Man was Guardians of the Galaxy. No yeah. one knows what the fuck Guardians of the Galaxy is. It's a talking raccoon in a tree that walks around. <laughs> right. Weird shit. And it's one of my, it's actually my favorite Marvel movie of all time yeah. of the MCU. Right. My favorite movie of the, of the MCU so far being Guardians of the Galaxy. So I was really excited for this obscure type movie and bringing mm-hmm. in magic. Right. Because we don't, you're no longer going to see the tech. We're not going to see the hammer. We're not going to see a dude steroid out um <laughs> we're gonna have magic yeah and you don't you never get to see magic fighting i mean right. you get to harry potter but harry potter sucked so <laughs> whoa 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 <laughs> like i said this isn't harry potter marks <laughs> i don't know i've watched harry potter a couple times on abc family or freeform whatever the hell it's called now and it, it, when it comes to the magic part it is boring as balls <laughs> uh it, it depends i what's funny is i actually I drew a parallel between the two as well with Harry Potter, but and I'll, I'll kind of get into that a little bit later uh, on on my side of how I felt about the movie when I left. Once again, we were really excited going into this, mm-hmm. right? You were yep. excited. And I was pumped up for this because watching those uh, trailers, I was like, as many people want to make the jokes about it look like Inception and shit like that. That was cool to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I wanted that Inception yeah. shit, but taken up to the next level. Exactly. And in this universe. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, not only are they folding buildings, but then they're folding buildings and fighting each other at the same time. Right. It, fucking insane. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I was pumped for that type of shit, for that astro, astro type fighting and all that shit, which we did get, which we did get in this movie. Yeah. But there's a couple other issues with this movie as well. So <laughs> rough synopsis, a little bit better synopsis than the... Uh, IMDb one and hopefully one that makes a little bit more sense than the Rotten, <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes, Tomatoes yeah. one. Just a hair better. <laughs> so the movie starts off right away and you get introduced to Dr. Stephen House. Pretty it's, accurate. As much as <laughs> they try to distinguish this character, but it he seems a lot like the TV show House. Yeah. I watched all the seasons of House. I really liked House. He even talks like him. Um, I don't know what it is about British people trying to do American accents. Um, they sound the same. They sound exactly the same. <laughs> Hugh Laurie is British and he sounds exactly the same. That's still, that's cool. I don't care. I'm not all about like if someone else did it, I'm not the old joke of the Simpsons did it or whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, if, as long as it works for your movie, I don't give a shit because more than like at this point, nothing's original. Right. Everything's yeah. taken. Yeah, absolutely. Which we we start to see a lot of that <laughs> yeah. visually and, and just different things. But yeah, uh, I liked the introduction to, to Stephen Strange and his arrogance, his cockiness, the way he's driving his car, which I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but that he eventually gets into an accident and it makes sense that, that uh, his arrogance of kind of being like, oh, well, I'm untouchable is what would cause the accident. So actually, before we're introduced to Doctor Strange, we actually get this beginning scene where this guy is moving some books around and stuff. We're in this mystic temple looking thing. Yeah. Um, a library of yeah. sorts, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, books place. Yeah. <laughs> As a Barnes and Noble. <laughs> he gets uh, jumped by multiple people. They seem to go through a lot to cut his head off. I thought that was kind of like over the top to string him up, put a bucket down for him, and then with all the magic he's using, he just uses a couple hatchets to cut his head off. <laughs> Instead yeah. of using magic to cut his head yeah, off. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. But what I, I thought that was a great start to the movie and what I thought was going to continue that the tone, type of... The yeah, dark tone. Yeah, of like, okay, we're going to de- decapitate this guy, catch his head in a basket. We're not just going to let it on the floor. And then throw it at somebody. <laughs> 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 they don't throw it at somebody. <laughs> right. but, but yeah, that, that kind of quick uh, introduction, I was like, oh shit. I think I even said that when I was sitting there like, okay. Yeah, you did actually. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> like, God damn! Fucking <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> this dude's head falls off. Then the ancient one being played by the last Airbender. I, I, it, it, unfortunately, looking at these movies, some of these movies now, you just look at these characters and how they portray people, and there's just too many parallels, right, to other source material, and it just kind of leaves it to jokes, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when she sat there with her big yellow uh, rain jacket, I was like, "It's Jubilee! They brought the X Men back!" Like, it just it just looked weird. And then when she pulls it down, she looks like the last Airbender. Yeah. She looks badass, though. That fight scene, that's a really great... I thought that was yeah. a really awesome way to start it off. She just fucking just whipping a bunch of people's asses. They ultimately do escape with the two pages he rips out of the book. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get a fine for that. <laughs> See, that's a better joke than what some of these movies right, were. Yeah. <laughs> what some of the jokes were. <laughs> in this, some of the jokes were in this movie. Then, then they get to Stephen Strange and his arrogance, his assholeness. <clears throat> Whatever. He was kind of a dick, but he's successful. I, I didn't really even think he was that bad. If he ca- he cared about the people, he was just kind of a dick to the doctor. 
One of the things that we did notice in this movie, and this is for the pretty much the consensus of the whole movie, a lot of the jokes uh, for you and I didn't land very well at all. Right. Um, the theater overall enjoyed it. The yeah. People that were in that theater overall, I would say 92% of the people were laughing. Or 90%? 90. On Rotten Tomatoes. Very good. Very good. <laughs> roughly. Yeah, roughly about 91%. 90% of the people were laughing in the theater. So it's not like that this movie just wasn't funny. Our, right. our sense of humor was not uh, necessarily enjoyed by this movie. Right, yeah. Which, oh. I, again, I'll, I have I have lots of, I have a tangent I'm going to go on. Well, when we go on the dislikes, we'll get to that point. Yeah. But, uh, there's a lot of little weird, awkward moments he's having with like family members and stuff. People are laughing. You and I are sitting there. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't get that part. At, at the beginning, he saves someone's life, pulls a bullet out of him or something, and then yeah, the bullet's pinching his spinal cortex. Yeah, and then they they made some joke, and I, it just, I don't know, went over my head. Or <laughs> well, it's because he's awkward and he doesn't want like if you watch House, it, it's just like that. Okay, he didn't ever want to interact with the family. And he never wanted them to thank him or anything like that. He just wanted to solve the mystery of uh, of what was wrong with the person. Okay. So he has this very awkward hug because he doesn't want to interact with them. Okay, I did see that. Yeah, that's what people were laughing at. Huh. Was the awkward hug. Okay, yeah, went over my head. <laughs> yeah, it's a house thing. That's what I mean. Right. It was okay. house. It was fucking right. house as a superhero. <laughs> as a sorcerer. You know, house and Harry Potter fucked. <laughs> This is what came out. Wow. <laughs> Harry's got a big wand. That, that, that's a vision. <laughs> Harry wand. <laughs> I wonder if they made a porn call. <laughs> As we move further, then we have the car crash incident, which one of uh, one of my likes is actually about the CGI. The car crash incident, though, looks very awkward. Yeah. It was very cut, very quick edits. It just keeps going back and forth to him, to this road, Back and forth, back and forth, and it just didn't even look like he was on a road. Like, it was very awkward looking. Yeah. Then he gets cra- He crashes, basically destroys his hand. His airbag is a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, barely came out. <laughs> well, I think it did come out, like, and then it was, it was like, deflated before Ooh. he went forward. Oh, oh, okay. That's what it looked like to me. It was already deflating before he went forward. I thought it was like a, a <laughs> shitty birthday party or something. <laughs> <laughs> just full like, of jello so yeah just, just, just something goes in and it doesn't do shit it didn't do anything um overall the impact causes a bunch of shrapnel to go everywhere he's getting he's gotten fucked up yeah um his hands basically get ripped to shreds yeah um, which that's how he makes his living he's a neurosurgeon yeah so you need delicate hands so his hands are shaking and so he goes on this whole adventure, this montage of trying to fix his hands. Ooh, an 80s montage would have been sweet. Gotta have a montage. <laughs> yeah. Just show him lifting, running up some stairs. Exactly. Chasing a chicken. <laughs> Get the chicken! <laughs> now listen, I want you to try, listen to me. I want you to try to, to chase this little chicken. Well, what do I gotta chase a chicken for? It's embarrassing, you know? First, because I said so. And second, because chicken chasing is how we always used to train in the old days. Yeah. You catch this thing, you can catch grease lightning. So then you go into him trying to find out. He runs into his, you know, he's talking to the therapist, the physical therapist. The therapist gives him some shit about there is a guy that actually had the same condition you did. And he's fine. He just, I saw him walking around. Right. And and he's like, I'll just show you the medical records just to prove your arrogant ass wrong. And I'm like, I guess he's still a doctor, but I'm pretty sure that's against HIPAA laws. <laughs> like, you can't give out somebody's information, and especially, I mean, that's personal information. Right. And their medical background, too. I mean, he is a doctor, but he's not the operating physician. I just, right. That's the first thing that came to my head. I was like, that's against HIPAA laws. <laughs> Way to go, asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Just to prove this one right. arrogant yeah, exactly. asshole wrong. See, I got you. He even left the sticky note in there. Yeah. <laughs> I told, told you, you so. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Just some weird... Throughout this movie, you will see major conveniences for strange. Yeah. A lot of strange conveniences <laughs> in this movie. He finds the guy. The guy's walking around. The guy tells him where he, uh, where he healed himself. Yeah. So then it also has this character moment, which I thought was really abrupt. Some people say that it was a... A great moment, and it showed how much of a dick he was and how unappreciative he was. But I just thought it was so abrupt. I understand he's trying to go through the surgery with his hands. He's trying to fix his hands up. But then all of a sudden, he, this chick, I guess, is living with him again. I don't know why she's coming to his apartment. Yeah, um, I, I guess. Uh, well, that's what he was pissed off about is that because 
in their relationship she's the person not just in their relationship but period who just wants to save the day and that that when he gets into his, his ass chewing of her like that uh He's basically um, saying, I'm just uh, your project. I'm your next project, your next baby bird with the broken wing that, that you're going to fix up and let me fly away, like like that whole thing. And so right. I think that's why she came back into his life because she's basically saying he doesn't have anyone and I'm going to help him so that he can recover and, and eventually move on with his life. And that was one of the things that she was trying to convince him of. She basically gets her ass chewed out by him. And he just blames her for everything. Right. And then she just leaves. <laughs> it just seemed really abrupt to me. Like, he's just trying to do this therapy. He's trying to heal himself. And then he just yells at her. And she leaves. The The cutting, the pacing of this movie in the beginning is fast. Yeah. And it's all over the place. Right. Um. So, definitely pay attention if you care about what's being said. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, he goes to, I believe it's called Kamata. He, he finds this temple. And he finds it in a very obscure way. He just keeps walking around, stumbling around, yelling Kamata at people. Yeah. <laughs> and every once in a while, people point, and some people ignore him because he just looks like a crazy homeless guy <laughs> right. yelling Kamata. Who's, who's white, tall, and stands out. <laughs> uh, Mordor or just is standing there all menacingly for some reason. Like, I don't know why he's just with, standing with there. With his hood. Yeah, with that his hood, been... his uh, Assassin's Creed hood. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's just standing there, and he just hears the guy saying Kamata, Kamata, over and over again. Uh, <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm trying to be uh, uh, very objective through this. <laughs> um, then he gets lost. Uh, he gets pinned in an alley. These three guys just beat the shit out of him for a watch. Yeah. Because he has no money. Uh, Mr. Miyagi comes in there and saves <laughs> Daniel's son's life. That just reminded me of the Karate Kid so much <laughs> when he did that. And then he just picks him up. He's like, you're looking for Kamatosh? And he's like, all right, right this way. And like, you don't know who the fuck this guy is. Right. Oh, thank you. I wanted to blow it up. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I wanted to know. I wanted to destroy all you motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> he gets in there. And this is finally where the movie, to me, actually did pick up. Mm -hmm. um, when he gets first introduced to the Ancient One, I do like how Marvel was making fun of themselves in a way when people were complaining about the whitewashing of the Ancient One, who's supposed to be an obviously an ancient Japanese right. or type uh, character. There's a guy sitting there with the Fu Manchu yep. and all that stuff. <laughs> and he's like, oh, ancient one, thank you. And, it's, and then like he keeps getting interrupted. And then finally, the airbender says, oh, well, here you go. And, and yeah. he realizes she's the ancient one. Right. When it comes to the whitewashing aspect of this, I don't know why they couldn't just do a, a Japanese or Asian or Chinese guy. I don't know why I, they felt they know. hadn't added a woman to this. Disney already has Donnie Yen signed up on a bunch of movies. He's an awesome fucking fighter. He's an awesome uh, action movie star in Japan. Mm -hmm. He's done a lot of great movies. If you haven't seen Ip Man, any of those movies are fucking awesome. Wow. He does. <laughs> it's They're great action scenes. Seeing this guy in those action scenes as the, as the ancient one would have been fucking awesome. Yeah. Because he would have been able to take that a lot farther, I think. And she's already young. He's obviously young. So it wouldn't have mattered on age, but you just add them, put a little aesthetics. Why couldn't we just have that as our ancient one? They did a woman with a skull cap on her head, made her look <laughs> weird. Fine, I guess. Yeah, it, it works. I, I thought she did a fantastic job. One of my positives of this movie is I thought everyone, the acting was really well done. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch did a fantastic job as Doctor Strange. I, I really liked Rachel McAdams. I thought she did a, a good job as a love interest. It was a small part, but I thought she did a good job. I liked uh, the guy who played Mordo. Chuatel a GF4. Uh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> I wanted to see more from the villain. I have I have my own complaints, but I, I liked the the villain and the main villain in this. Like, but so the all of the 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 acting in this was was phenomenal, and I I thought Tilda Swinton did a, a great job as well. I mean, yeah, she did good. I, I kind of, I don't doubt that. Like, it was still a good version. I think that version, that uh, the ancient one playing by like Donnie Yen or something like that, I think it could have been stepped up and done a lot better mm -hmm. if it was done with like Donnie Yen. There's some parts she does say and, do, and does that kind of throw me off a lot of the times. So I think maybe the writing in general would have maybe yeah. maybe took, t took that character down for me either way, even if it was like a Donnie Yen or something. I don't know. Uh, it still was a cool character. It was mm -hmm. an OP character, an overpowered character for the most part, except for a couple moments. Yeah. <laughs> but overall, it was a cool character. It just wished there was a little bit more time 
with the character. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think that's across the board with, with kind, all of, kind of everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so as we move across that, she just keeps touching him, and he just keeps breaking all the different dimensions, which is cool. And there is one joke in that one that I did think was kind of cool when he's going through all the shit and he looks at her. What was in that tea? Like you know, yeah, because he thinks he's yeah, tripping. that was pretty he, he thinks he's tripping out. The the whole experience with him going through dimensions and everything was awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. A little long. It, yeah. it got a little bit where I, I could. I thought I was tripping at one point. <laughs> yeah, you think it's gonna be over with? Cause she brings him back. Then she looks at him. Good. Okay. Boom. And yeah. Sends him back. Sends him back again. <laughs> tripping his ass out again. So then we have the not even necessarily a montage. It is just sped up. Mm-hmm. Um, he's kind of training. Everybody else is doing way better than he is. <laughs> right. They, yeah. They, they, they keep the showing beginning. these uh, like stints and poses and everything. Everybody's got the cool mystic magic and he's I the did, only one without it. I did laugh at that part where his his was like pew pew. <laughs> yeah. yeah, his was like, like pathetic. Like it looked like it would barely start a fire. Yeah. It's kind of what it looked like. But you made the joke yeah. of when yeah. he gets thrown in. Yeah. The- when he, she throws him up in the fucking Appalachians or whatever the fuck that was. Yeah. Mount Everest. Yeah. Mount Everest. Yeah. 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 <laughs> fucking um when she's when he yeah, when she throws his ass in Everest. Yeah, he's just barely making a spark. I'm like, well, if he keeps that up, at least he might get a fire out of it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So the movie progresses through. It has a lot of similarities to another origin movie as well batman begins yeah um they're in like a cool monastery there's training there's fighting but this one has magic and i do like what they're doing he's he's obviously a really smart guy he's mm-hmm. pushing past his limits more and more yeah very quickly and they're starting to recognize that i wish they would have taken a little bit more time with it because you don't really understand the time that has passed right from when he starts to once he's like okay i'm awesome and, and it was very abrupt because i want to say the part where you kind of get a clue is when he is breaking into the library essentially he's like you know conjuring up that little hole and then he reaches in steals a couple books and at that point i was like oh fuck so he already knows how to do that yeah. so he so he's clearly able to it's to like as soon as he was really able to fast. make one portal it just became unlimited right right yeah so he got it and then he he knew how to use it from there but there's no gauge of time as how as far as how long that took him and and it, i did like you know like you said he's a very intelligent individual right. and he pushes himself and they they reference that in the movie uh, and that's that's why he was so successful as a neurosurgeon is because of how much time he devotes to it he has a uh, photographic memory uh, and that's what got him through medical school basically <laughs> so as the movie progresses even like we said we don't really know the time frame and he doesn't even really know what that monastery is there for and he's slowly getting poor exposition <laughs> told to him throughout the story it's just <laughs> these random moments where they'll talk about the one of the bad guys uh killison killison killickson or whatever mad mickelson's character. right yeah <laughs> Um, the guy with the bad eye shadow and shit. Um, <laughs> so he, they keep pushing it along and then he learns about the dark dimension and it's, it just feels like with all the books that he's reading, he would, he would find out about these dark dimensions mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But it seems like all this information is being withheld from him for some reason. I don't know why. Well, I think because the last airbender didn't want him to turn into uh, to go the bad to the, guy. yeah, to go to the dark side or whatever the fuck they called it. Then. Yeah, feel the force. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So, so she was trying to withhold information, didn't want to push him along, but was also recognizing like, His okay, potential. he could, yeah, he he could help us in this war. He gets thrown right into this big battle. They show Mad Mickelson's character just fucking blowing shit up, and we find out that there's these three buildings ran by these sorcerers mm-hmm. and they protect a the planet from the dark realm yeah that's what they said there's one in new york one in london and one in hong kong i believe yep there's three of them and they protect and they put a sphere like a magic sphere over the earth and protect the earth from attacks spiritual yep. attacks yeah and there's portals. You can obviously see. They can see. Like, there's a doorway to the one in Hong Kong. There's a doorway to the one in New York and so forth. Right? They're looking at this. And when one of the doors gets popped open and it shows him just blowing the shit out of the London one. Right. And just blows him up and knocks everybody silly. And it knocks Strange all the way to the New York one. And he's flipping out. <laughs> so he's like, Fuck <laughs> right. New York. Yeah. Exactly. The fights continue on. I did love the action in this. Oh, man. Yeah. Really well done. The CGI in this was, for the most, most part, part, 
uh, was awesome. It, like we mentioned, the car was a little weird. There were some parts where I, I think when you said, what is he, Superman now, where he, the way that he took off, that kind of looked weird. That's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. It, it, that, that, that looked funny. That was after he eventually gets the levity cloak, right. uh, to, to help him, which that was a weird kind of interaction. But, um, yeah, the CGI in this for the most part was awesome. And, and that's what I was going into this movie wanting is kind of like these powers. And like we said, the inception, yeah, this feel of, of reality yeah and what's going on yeah it, it looked awesome that that fight in new york was awesome yeah so the point of what or what the evil guys are doing in this movie these minions these heretics whatever they fucking called <laughs> are trying to destroy these three buildings to release dormammu this evil entity that's going to kill everybody <laughs> right yeah yeah he's a world eater i think is what they said for the most part for power and yeah uh, he's part. He's ruler of the dark realm, and he, he'll basically eat there. And these guys think they're gonna get immortality, right? For you know, for helping him. Yeah. So they destroy the London one. They head to the New York one. They they kill the guy that's controlling the New York one. Strange sees it. Strange starts fighting with him. For the most part, is holding his own against these guys, even though he just learned this shit. Yeah, they did a good job showing that his intelligence over them. Because he he used kind of his surroundings and the the part where he clicks the door open, he uh, changes the location of it, and then yeah, and, and then yeah, because there's these three portals and then right, like, and you can just click it over and it'll show like an oasis, then it'll show the desert, yeah, show the mountains. So and that stuff. that was really cool. And then as they're kind of tumbling, he gets up to a higher level of someone and he just drops down. And and does like this double stomp coup de gras looking thing, and yeah. and the other person shoots out of it, and uh, and into the desert, I think, or or whatever. Yeah, and, and then, then there's a bunch the of like, guy, sand like in the jungle. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. He was trying to to outsmart them and and use his surroundings a little bit. So I I thought they did a good job with that. One of the things they use as a cop out in this movie is this thing. I think I cannot remember exactly what they called it. I was thinking in my head it was called the glass zone. Because they, what they do is, oh, is yeah. it's this other dimension or this other part of the real world where it doesn't affect the real world. Right. So whatever they're doing, they can practice spells. They can do all this fighting and all this shit inside this thing. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't actually affect the real world. Uh, super convenient when you don't want to kill people and you don't want to make a body count. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. cause, Cause all your superhero movies have been and other superhero movies from other genres have been getting a lot of shit for killing yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, pretty much. So that's a good cop out. I like how they add, I don't know if that is in the comics. If it is in the comics, please let me know. Yeah. I'm sure people will, but I just thought that was really cool cop out to mm -hmm. put them in a different dimension where they could pretty much roll a city up like a tortilla right yeah <laughs> and, and it won't affect a goddamn thing i thought the the cgi around that the way that the cars were kind of surrounding or going around what they were fighting in the the glass shield thingy uh the cars would like shoot around it and the world would kind of bend and the world continued the, uh as you're watching as they're fighting the world is just progressing yeah, the cars as, are as dipping normal. down and just yeah and it was cool they don't know any difference uh and then that was kind of the other confusing part is what well, once once he ends up getting stabbed he and he goes to the hospital there's there is some overlap as far as he shoots out of out of the closet because he conjured up some sort of yeah he uses teleporting a sling ring and he can teleport but they weren't in the glass zone then Oh, okay. The glass zone came God. after when he came back from right, the hospital. I was, I was confused by that. And uh, he was perfectly fine after that. Right. Because <laughs> yeah, um, then he was running normal. And I don't yep. think, he never felt that wound again. He's he a did terrible not sell seller. It. <laughs> um, uh, that was one cool thing I did like a little bit when he was fighting in the... We did skip over that a little bit when he was fighting in the hospital. Uh, he had an astro proje pro projection of himself mm -hmm. fighting with the other astro projection of another guy. Right. Of the Scott Atkins, Scott Atkins character. Mm -hmm. And they're fighting and it's kind of like ghost fighting. But a couple of things are moving and she's still right. trying to heal the one thing that kind of threw me off was the chick was just so okay with him dipping in and out. Like, hey, how you doing? Okay, you're going back. And like, <laughs> right. like, that shit didn't throw her off at all. Right. She's just jamming needles in him and sewing him up. And, <laughs> all right. Shocking the shit out of him. Yeah. I need more. More power. Yeah, he was like elect uh, Electrode or whatever the fuck that guy was from Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just get more power. Yeah. <laughs> just shocking his ass. That was kind of a cool fight. And then we get back into New York. It it, it just seems like they bounce from one action scene. They go to another. I, I wanted action in this movie, but I got a lot more than we thought we were going to mm -hmm. get um, out of this movie. I thought there was going to be a lot of mystic arts type talk. 
a lot of dimensional talk, a lot about beings and unknown things. And it was talked about, but very shortly and not in detail at all. Right. Um, which is kind of one of the disappoint- disappointing things about the dialogue in this movie. They tried to explain the in the most layman's, ter- layman's terms to you about what was happening in this movie. Right. But they didn't want to, apparently they didn't want to take the road of diving deep into it. And what's really going on with the dark, this dark realm, Mm -hmm. why these guys are the way they are, uh, why these heretics or these traitors, whatever you want to call them, are going against them. No, it was a very topsoil type storytelling of what was really going on. Then we get into more fights, more fights, a couple more fights. (laughs) A few more fights. Then ultimately the Ancient One or Last Airbender, whatever, uh, gets the old... uh, Surprise. <laughs> um, she's trying to kill one guy, and the guy stabs his own guy to go through him to get to her. Yeah. And she gets poked. One of the things I thought was funny was they brought up that she was immortal. That's why she's lived so long. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, not very immortal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think she was bulletproof. Or, I think she she could just live forever. Yeah. Uh, Based on taking well, power. Well, she just got poked by an icicle and... <laughs> fucking done <laughs> that's a powerful icicle well i that's a correction because then he teleported her back in the real world and her ass went through a glass thing and then dropped that's probably what killed her. yeah <laughs> i forgot about that part. yeah i did too actually <laughs> <laughs> right it's probably the impact <laughs> i don't know how far she technically fell between dimensions <laughs> i'm not very good with that science <laughs> math <laughs> and then there the one piece of dialogue that i thought was good for the most part even though I'm not kidding, and when she talked a lot of the times, except for the beginning, I kind of tuned out. She just was talking gibberish to me, uh, for me a lot of the times, just repeating the same shit over and over again. He keep asking about his hands, and she's like, no, it's not your hands. And mm-hmm. she gave him the same speech basically over and over again, but he just never figured it out. I, yeah, I think that's where they were trying to get deep in the it's it's within you it's your power and you yada, you, yada. you right yeah and then with this speech it's not about you <laughs> yeah so she said yeah yeah pretty much so <laughs> but be, i did yeah, like i did like the effects self, and selfless the and... I, yeah be selfless and, i did like the looks and the effects of the lightning going down i did think their little astro look was throwing me off mm-hmm. i don't know if it was me or what was going on, but it seemed like it was kind of weird. She looked weird sometimes, like she was misshaping. I don't yeah, know if that's because she was dying, that. so it was like fading out or something. I don't know if that's what they were trying to show or not, mm-hmm. but I, all I could think of was like Patrick Swayze looked a lot better in Ghost <laughs> than this because they just looked awkward. It just looked weird. I was like, how hard is it just to have them really stand there and just fade right. them out? Yeah. <laughs> like, are you really CGIing their fucking fade, their little uh, astro fucking thing? I can do it in Photoshop pretty easy. Yeah, it's not that hard. <laughs> They do it all the time with Ghost and Bigfoot and shit. <laughs> yeah. Not that fucking hard. Yeah. But yeah, that was, that kind of threw me off a little bit. Overall, the Ancient One dies. Uh, Mordo's pissed off because she was using um, magic. And they never explained this, why she was using magic from the Dark Realm. She yeah. just wanted to live longer. And she gotta, yeah. You got to do what well, you got to do. Well, the, what they said, yeah, basically for the for the greater good of the world. She It was kind of a selfish act. And turned into a selfless act of, oh, well, she thought, because uh, the Mord, Mordo or whatever the fuck, <laughs> he mentions that like right after she died in his frustration is that uh, that she thought by by using that power, she was helping the world. And I thought that would have been a way more interesting story, like kind of take the elements out of like almost Constantine, like instead of her just giving him the same speech over and over again or teleporting him to the fucking... Uh, Mount Everest. I mean, I would have liked it if they were able to like teleport or astro project into like the dark realm and he could see what it looks like and she can explain to him how this is doing this and that. I don't know, explain this mystical world that we're dealing with, yeah. right? And I thought that would have been a lot better. So when we do see that dark realm come on top of the planet later on, like we know what she's talking about, it's here now. Right. But other than that, but when it's there, it just looks like those. Remember those uh, balls that had like a elastic thing that you could put on your finger and you could just throw them and they were like squishy and shit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it just looked like we got attacked <laughs> by those things. <laughs> um, it looked really weird. I don't, I, you don't even know what's happening. Somehow these bad guys, they only show three of them and they show a fucking house full of these good sorcerers 
and the next you see is they're fucking pillaged and raped and blown to shit by yeah. those three bad people that right. couldn't fight with the shit. <laughs> they couldn't Before. beat Doctor Strange. Yeah. Some rookie. Well, he's that powerful. Yeah, he's that cloak beats the shit out of everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Drags him around and tells him what to do. The cloak, I thought, had potential. What they did with the cloak, make it comic relief. Right. Awkward. When, when there was plenty of comic relief. Yeah, when there's already <laughs> enough jokes. I, my problem with some of the jokes was they were very obvious. Mm-hmm. I mean, they you could see those jokes... I don't know how, I don't know, I mean, I watch a lot of comedy, I, I deal with, I, I listen to a lot of comedy, love comedy, and I could just see these jokes coming from like a mile away. Right. Like nothing surprised me at all when it came to the jokes. That was kind of my issue with a lot of them, like the Beyonce joke. Right. Like you knew that was going to happen. Yeah. You knew he was going to, they were going to show him listening to it. Yeah. Or he was going to turn around, he was going to kind of start singing it or something. You knew that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. It was just fucking from a mile away, you could see that shit. Oh, so ultimately, the Dark Realm gets taken over. They have a kind of a cool fight again. One of the parts that you and I laughed at, and no one else <laughs> laughed at, yeah. was when he was reversing time. Those uh, the bad people, the the followers, or whatever they are. One of the chick, I think it was a chick. Uh, yeah, she gets uh, knocked down, and as time's reverting, there was like an aquarium or something like that. And they, she gets, yeah, they got broken. Yeah, and she gets sucked and into it. And she gets it. sucked into the aquarium, she's like, <laughs> and she's like stuck. <laughs> and she's like stuck in it, and it just that was funny. And you, you and I were the only ones that laughed. Yeah, that we, theater was dead silent except for our two asses laughing. <laughs> we did kind of skip over uh, the part where he learns he figures out let me reverse the time well first somehow yeah, with the he, eye of eggmon eggmon or something like yeah, that eggnog and, and <laughs> eggnog ooh is the season <laughs> to be jolly fa la 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 didn't think you would hear singing on this did you we sing every time <laughs> yeah, pretty we much we do some stupid shit <laughs> i thought that was re- really well done that he was first he starts messing with the apple a little bit and right. then uh, reverts the, the pages back. Yeah, and then yeah, I thought that was really cool. How he figures, oh well, since this is Tor, let me revert the whole book back, and then I can get the pages, and I can read and and kind of figure out. So that was cool. So he can manipulate time a little bit, which then plays into the final act and this whole thing, and and when he's uh, reverting the time in Hong Kong and fi- right. trying to fix it. And so as he Superman flies his way <laughs> up to the bad guy. Than a bullet, stronger than a diesel, leaps tall buildings in a pound. Is it a bird? No. Is it a plane? No. What is it? It's Dr. Strange. So then he flies up there and he sees Parallax from Green Lantern. <laughs> I could not believe in 2016 we would see another cloud based <laughs> yeah. villain. I thought they I thought after Fantastic Four in Green Lantern, we would never see a cloud, fart cloud boss <laughs> ever again. Eater of worlds, it's pretty much the same. Studios are just scared to actually show these eaters of worlds as their physical beings themselves. Mm-hmm. Because Dormammu is his name. And from what I remember from uh, some of the Doctor Strange stuff I do know, is he kind of looks like Ghost Rider, just has a flaming head. He has like a big cape, just like oh, wow. like him. And, you know, he can look like that in the comics. He can, There's a couple other things that like, he looks like. This guy just looked nothing like him. No. Like, it, it was just weird. I remember when they were doing that little, when she was taking him on that ride. And, like, it showed this planet moving. And then it showed this purple figure. Like, oh, there's darker things deeper. I remember I looked at you and I was like, oh, they're, talk- they're talking about Thanos. Yeah. Because it showed, like, these lines like, and, like, purple. And yeah. I thought it was Thanos. We're going to jump right into that. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. She's pr- she's uh, predicting Thanos is coming back or coming out or something like that of the closet. I don't know. <laughs> it was just weird. I was like, oh, shit. And then I find out later on, oh, no, that was supposed to be the bad guy of this movie. Right. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, never mind. He, so he sticks himself in an endless time loop. That was kind of funny. Yeah. Got a little annoying. but it, 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 Yeah, a yeah, l- little overdone, but I laughed at it at first. When he says, oh, and they cut out when he's about to yeah, say fuck. Yeah. That was funny <laughs> when he gets about to get smashed. One of the things, though, that was just pissing me off, though, because he kept doing it. And it looked like for a second it, the guy was going to do it. It's like, okay, they're stuck in this endless time loop if he dies. What happens if he just fucking maims him and like just leaves him there bloody? He can still continue what he's doing. Yeah. That's well, all I can think of because he hits him and he falls down and he's having problems getting up. And I'm like, there you go. Just fucking injure him. Just hurt him really bad. Yes, and he can't, re- and he, the time loop will end because he'll still be alive. Um, and he can't revert the time back. Yeah. And unless he could just do it 
Unless the time like loop is manually. literally stuck on like a 30 second thing. Right. Yeah, it might be. I'm not quite sure if that's how it works or not. I don't know if he's stuck on a 30 minute time loop or or it only restarts when he dies. I'm not quite sure. I don't know. But because he gets annoyed, he stops his whole plan to take over the earth. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Just because this guy keeps booming back to life. Oh, man. Because he had 99 lives, <laughs> he says, fuck this shit. <laughs> I'm leaving this planet. I'll make you a deal. What is it? <laughs> I mean, it's like, that was just weird to it, me. It's the epitome of the Homer Simpson boxing, where the guys just get exhausted from kicking the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah. All right, fine. Just, just beat me. He just falls over. <laughs> yeah. He just tapped out so fast. And he kept his word, like... All right, I'll stop the time loop. Stop time loop. Smash! And just the start. It was just weird. He's supposed to be this evil, dark demon motherfucker. And he keeps his word. It was just... So that was kind of the rough summary of the movie. Then we get into the after credits. One of the after credits I thought was... It was cool. Uh, with Chris Hemsworth, Thor. Yeah. Um, he keeps refilling his beer. First he changes the tea to a beer. Right. He's got this big mug. And then he shows Chris Hemsworth... Chris Hemsworth with a full big giant mug and then it goes to strange comes back and the thing's it's fucking empty it's done yeah and then it magically refills and then he's like yeah I'm like, all right so that kind of makes sense because that's what people were wondering if strange was going to be in the new thor ragnarok movie coming out because there were some of those set pictures that were released where it showed thor holding a like business card or something like that with stock uh stephen strange's address and number on it mm-hmm. and they were like oh shit does that mean he's going to his their house and his house and shit right or is he going to be in the movie and obviously that's the scene from this movie mm-hmm. whether he's going to be how much farther in the movie he's going to be who knows right if he's going to help thor transport to different realms and different places and stuff like that I, who knows what's going to happen uh then we had the second one which i i laughed because we have mordor come back and he's upset with how everything went down. That they broke all the rules. The the ancient one broke her rules and stuff that she set forth. Yeah. And all these people betrayed him yep. and betrayed oh. what they were supposed to do. Yeah. Well, and the natural law of of not basically dicking with time and shit like that. Right. He gets mad about that, so he's gonna fucking kill everybody now. Yep. That's the plan. Pretty much. He shows up, and the one guy who kind of I guess started it. I'm I, I'm assuming that he. Walked away. He's using powers constantly. Yeah, it's the guy that to, f- fixed his nerve damage. Yeah, and then that's the first person he decides to kill. Like, all right, and, well. and all I can think of was like, if you had that power the whole time, why didn't you use that against the other guys? If you could just suck out the magic from them. Yeah. That would have ended this shit a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> you just sucked so, the magic out of a lot of these guys. <laughs> kind of reminded me of the Sinestro after credit scene of mm-hmm. Green Lantern. There's a lot of comparisons to Green Lantern in this movie. <laughs> yeah. um, a lot of comparisons to a lot of other movies. <laughs> yeah. But I like Green Lantern because yeah. that one's a shit movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he has this evil moment. He takes it and so Doctor Strange 2 is coming up. We've already kind of talked a little bit about the likes and dislikes we had of this movie. We'll mm-hmm. go into the likes and we'll emphasize a little bit more on the likes that we had about this movie. One, the action and the over and most of the CGI in this movie were fantastic. Yeah, and the people talking about 3D being um, good or great in this movie actually makes me want to go see 3D. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of hate 3D. Yeah, 3D so. can get raped by a big <laughs> elephant dick for all I care. Um, I hate 3D, wow. and this actually. Yeah, I kind of want to go see it. So, because yeah. just how everything looked in this movie mm-hmm. and 3D would probably be awesome. Yep, but would elevate it a little bit more. I thought the fights there there wasn't a whole lot in this movie that kind of kept my spirits up. I guess, but the fights were were awesome. the The action scenes were great. We talked about the the intro scene right off the bat. They start bending worlds. The way that it was done was it was so well choreographed um for the most part there some of the shots with with the fights um were a little weird little choppy yeah quick edits and they just kept cutting in and out yeah like, half the shit is cgi why are you quick cutting yeah i wanted to see a little bit more right and and, and kind of delve into that but but for the most part a lot of it was was uh, really well done right no i i did that part was fantastic and if you very visually forward about what you like and you're a visual person in a movie this is probably the movie for you to see because mm-hmm. visually watching action scenes like this are they're awesome and i can't imagine i can't imagine the 3d being bad and it'd probably be really good and it's tempting we we might do it yeah um the one of the the other things we did talk about uh, already was was the acting the characters in and what they had as far as time i thought they did it they did a pretty good job 
a, a lot of them, I, I guess I, I was wanting more in, in the emotion and, and to kind of delve into a little bit more of the backstory and, uh, of, of pretty much everyone. And, and that's, that's where a lot of the movie was kind of fell flat for me yeah. was I, I was left wanting a little bit more and, and to see more of the evolution of Dr. Strange and, and how he got from this arrogant cocky guy. It's all of a sudden like, Oh, I didn't get into, into the medical field to kill people. I save people, blah, blah, blah. And then he, which he, just seemed like that conviction came out of nowhere for me. Like I understand that what he's oath, his oath as a doctor is, mm -hmm. um, his Hippocratic oath. And I understand that. And, but it just seemed like out of all the things he was learning and uh, some of the fighting and shit he was doing that just, when he came up about the killing the guy, when he killed the guy, he didn't seem to give a shit. He throws his cape on and walked down. And then all of a sudden, when he's talking to someone, he gives a shit. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that whole problem with killing or something like that just seemed like to me came out of nowhere. Yeah. It was just really random. You never got any sense from this guy that he cared about uh, whether or not people that were trying to kill him died. I don't, I don't know. It was very, very weird. Yeah. I, I thought so too. But, um, so that, that was a positive, you know, and a lot of aspects left me wanting more. I overall, I like the character of Dr. Strange. Yeah. I like, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch playing him. I do like that tone. You can tell he's probably going to replace, uh, uh, Robert Downey Jr. When he, he stops doing these Marvel movies, he's definitely the fill in character with the kind of arrogant cocky attitude. Yeah. He's definitely going to take over that spot whenever mm -hmm. um, Robert Downey Jr. is done with Iron Man. I like that guy. I like that character overall. Yeah, I, yep, I did here. like him. I wanted a little bit more from him. The jokes to be toned back a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the dislikes. Where to begin? <laughs> so the 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 movie is very bloated, and I realized this when we got to the training montages, or not even really montages. I realized this that like, wow, this movie has a lot to show us and it's not going to have the time to do it. Yeah. When like they need to show him being cocky and arrogant and being a great doctor, they need to show his accident. They need to show his recovery. Then they need to show his training and they need to establish all these other characters at the same time. I was like, there's no way this is a two hour movie. There's no way they're going to make this work. Yeah. See, I, I wish I would have known it was a two hour movie because I could see that. I could see how they were going, but I was optimistic in watching the movie. I'm like, okay, let's see this unfold a little bit. And then there was a quick change immediately of, oh fuck. Like, no, this is, this isn't going to be as long as I was hoping for. And that's been one of my complaints about a lot of movies is as by as length and trying to cram certain things in. And it's right when he switches to from not really knowing much to now knowing everything and being Doctor Strange, I could tell immediately like, oh, he's already the Doctor Strange. You know, he's he's come full circle. This is who he is. He's great at it with his powers and he has a little bit more to learn. But for the most part, it is who he is. And I knew at that point uh, it, this they're going to speed through the rest of this. And because the whole second half of the movie you you need to show him and all of his powers and and yeah, from what I understand, Dormammu is like one of the big baddies for uh, for Doctor Strange. I just like wow, they're gonna blow right through him. Yeah, I, I could just see the way this was going. The movie's coming to a conclusion. The third act is wrapping up, and we still haven't seen him. Well, we did see him for a second. Him and his Thanos cousin. <laughs> um, it, we did see him for a second, but I'm like they're just he's just word he's just words mm -hmm. at this point. We just keep hearing his name, and we never saw him. We never got this idea. Or what he would do. I thought it was very anticlimactic how it ended. Yeah. It was just uh, very odd. Well, that, ended. that's kind of, that's Marvel's forte with the villains and now, okay, well, th you solved it. That's how it is. Right. Th that's how it goes. You it's outsmarted kinda, him or something like that. Yeah. And... You had a dance off or <laughs> whatever. And uh, I'll, I'll try not to go on too long of a rant, but when the comparison that I drew between Harry Potter and this movie what uh, obviously there was a lot as far as magic and stuff like that and, and, and you you said uh, fucking harry potter sucks or, but for me harry potter i at least i after however many movies it was like nine movies that i was emotionally invested in the characters and so therefore the lack of powers and the, the way that the magic was done i was able to buy where this was the complete flip they it was a lot of powers a lot of you know, world bending, action, comedy, and then no emotion, 
not even i'm not a love interest guy i don't i for the most part i really couldn't care uh there's certain movies where it's left out intentionally rambo being one of them Mm -hmm. and and i like that that that's perfectly fine however in this movie i was begging for some emotional attachment to anything that i wanted the to see where the love interest went and it Even just kind of hand would be good <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so give those hands some love that's what they needed those whole right. time yeah exactly so the and and that's that's where this movie ultimately failed for me is i cannot emotionally get invested into anything or really care i i had there was a surface level of of okay i'm intrigued I want to see more of, of each of these characters. They did a great job introducing all of them, but that was about it. I couldn't give a shit about the main, the parallax villain. I couldn't give a shit about eyeshadow, scary guy. Yeah. And 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 that's that's where my frustration was. And you, there were some glimmer of of emotion and and trying to find the lesson, the moral of this story. What what are they trying to to tell us as an audience other than there's here's some jokes and you know, here's some action kind of stuff. And I I wanted to I and I again, going back to like movies like Rambo and 300, I love action and and that was the highs of this for me, but I wanted I wanted to to be a little bit more invested and I can now sort of kind of understand what people were were hoping for when they went in and saw Batman versus Superman. They were expecting one thing and got completely got a completely different thing and that's what left them disappointed. And I think that's ultimately what happened with me is I went into this, I watched the trailers and I was stoked and I felt that there, this was going to be a change. This was going to be completely different from from the other maybe not completely different but there was there was going to be a different tone different look there's different powers than the rest of the marvel movies and ultimately it was the same even from you have big action scene jump to old school dance song and uh and jokes that's straight from guardians of the galaxy it's so formulaic formulaic it bothers the shit out of me they yeah. i i'm i'm begging for a little bit more and and that's where a lot of these movies have have failed for me and that's why you know people can't believe that that i thought the first iron man was better than and you did too we just said it in our review was better than civil war and that's kind of why is it's hard for me to to get some sort of connection when you start to feel it and then they they hit you with a fucking falling mop is 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 your joke Right. And everyone laughs, and it's like, well, I'm trying to to get invested in this movie a little bit more, and you're just gonna throw all this humor, and like you mentioned earlier, blatant fucking humor that I can see coming from a mile away that doesn't really make me laugh. Deadpool did a fantastic job of I was invested in that, I was invested in his character, I wanted to see the fucking bad guy get his comeuppance or whatever, get his ass whooping at the end. There was jokes thrown into it. It was so well done and so far most marvel movies i I love guardians of the galaxy um but most marvel movies i I, it's just they they don't allow that to happen and that that's ultimately where my frustration is with with this movie yeah this this one definitely fell short on the dialogue aspect Mm -hmm. the story like i said it was very bloated and there's plot holes throughout the whole movie that just sink the shit out of this movie in order for Dormammu to show up, these three buildings needed to be destroyed because they were the ones protecting the planet. Doctor Strange specifically says to Mordor, they destroyed the London one. They have attacked the New York one twice. We saw them run out of the New York building, never doing anything to it. Then they show up in Hong Kong. That one's destroyed, but somehow Dormammu is there. Mm-hmm. New York, from what we last saw, was still standing. Right. If I miss something, let me know. But I heard him say that just before they went to Hong Kong, mm-hmm. just before they were going to start their big final fight. He says that directly to him. They destroyed London. They've attacked New York twice. But somehow Dormammu's coming through in Hong Kong, even though the New York one is still standing. <laughs> I, I wrote down after this Lex Luthor or Jesse Eisenberg <laughs> is. Very jealous of all the coincidences and conveniences that yep. happened in this movie. <laughs> because the ability for him to just run into all these characters. He runs he runs into a guy that just happens to know a guy that healed himself magically. He he gets the papers to a guy that he should never be able to get the papers from by law by so many laws and so many restrictions. 
Uh, this guy just talks to him willy-nilly, even though that guy was mad at him for turning him down originally. Well, let's back up to even the car crash when he tumbles down this hill, kind of almost in the middle of nowhere, splashes into the into some fucking ravine or whatever, yeah. and and they find him, and then they helicopter him to the hospital. He's still alive, uh, enough to where it's just his hands that are damaged. Yeah, and he had a couple scars on his face. Yeah, so but overall, and, his hands were damaged. And, and I get, I guess that's uh, directly from the comics. So okay, that that's fine. But that was a convenience where I'm like, oh wow, he, th- most people would be dead, and yeah. your shitty airbag didn't do anything, so you would definitely be dead. <laughs> Somehow he was able to keep his hands on that steering wheel through the whole time. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everything I've ever seen, people's hands go immediately up. Yeah, especially when the airbag comes out. That's the what, airbag pushes your arms off the steering wheel. Yep, that's what happened. That's to me. why he has a shitty airbag <laughs> to keep his hands on the steering wheel. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so that he can keep paddle shifting. <laughs> and then he just happens to stumble in this country where people don't speak English for the most part, and he just keeps repeating the name of this place. Stumbles into it. This guy just happens to hear him say it. He doesn't know who this guy is. Just hears him say it. He gets beat up for a watch. He saves him. Lets him in there. And they start teaching him. I mean, there was like, they kicked him out and then they had the stupid joke where he keeps pounding on it and then falls to the door. Yeah. Um, which was just stupid. <laughs> and then he gets a whole training monta- montage. And the whole time, he's trying to heal his hands, but his hands never get healed. And mm-hmm. it just and it just keeps going. And then the conveniences overall just keep building up. He just happens to be in the right place at the right time. He All of a sudden, he learns this. All of a sudden, he learns that at this moment. He just puts this eye of Egamamon or whatever it was called. Egg-mon. After the guy said that the relics will choose you. And this is a relic. Mm-hmm. And he just puts it on and it works for him. So I guess it chose him. So I guess he's got two of them that oh, chooses him. Just about to say, yeah, so he gets two relics. He gets the cape. Damn, and that's that, a but, then he had, but then he had to put it back. And he gets he just repeats that. And somehow he's able to read this stuff because he says he's got a photographic memory. And they just skip over the fact of that. The, the Mordor even says that. Like, you don't just learn that from a photographic memory. But then they never establish, like, why is this guy Neo? Why is he the one? <laughs> <laughs> and they, they, they never say anything other than that he's just smart and that he he's book smart. Yeah. So he's learning this shit. His hand-to-hand combat just gets stepped up. And just overall, the plots just keep thickening and thickening and just getting deeper and deeper. And they just don't fill in the hole at all. Right. Um, it just falls apart so fast um, for me with no explanation for any of what's going on. Yeah. Other than the fact that these guys want to bring in this fart cloud <laughs> to destroy the planet. Right. Um, it fell apart big time for me. The Affinity Gym throwaway line. Yeah. At the end. Oh, well, the, he puts the eye back and he's like, oh, that's good. You know, you, you're not ready for that yet, even though he just used it and saved the world. <laughs> and he's like. <laughs> yeah, good point. And, and then he's like. Oh, well, that's what happens when it's an affinity stone. What? And, oh, never mind. And just, th- I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? They just make that a throwaway yeah, line? Yeah, but it worked. And then the people in our yep, theater. The entire theater. <gasps> I'm like, oh my God. really? You couldn't see that from a fucking mile away? <laughs> and that's what Marvel movies do a lot. And that's why sometimes I don't like them, is that they treat you like an idiot. Yeah. They, they treat you like you're stupid, and they need to throw this right in your face. Every time that this is what this is. I will give them credit that that might be why they are so well received is because it, it, it's just surface level stuff that that, that you can enjoy on the surface. It, it, had I known what I was getting myself into <laughs> into this movie, I probably would have just relaxed a little bit and, and enjoyed a lot of it on the surface of, OK, here's some jokes and, you know, OK, duh, that was a fun movie. Yeah, I give it a 90 percent, too, or whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, when, when they continue to do that and it's hard to, I think the most emotional connection I've had was Ant-Man trying to spend time with his daughter or some <laughs> shit. I don't know, I, but he's a felon. So, but he buys that all back in Civil War. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. The, uh, one of the other big plot holes I just couldn't understand. And once again, you lose track of time in this movie was between him getting uh, in his car rack the recovery, the rehab, and then his training montage. The whole time, the bad guy has these two pages and he's trying to figure this out, right? Yes. Okay. And well, so, go ahead. <laughs> who knows how long this was? If it was a year, two years, we never, we don't have any idea. <laughs> if anything, you could believe it was all in like a week. <laughs> yeah. And, and he's had these pages the whole time. And I guess, yeah, they did kind of have this throwaway line like, oh, he's trying to. Whenever he figures out how to translate them, he'll be able to do it. But then this dumbass doctor 
can translate the whole other parts whoa, of the book. Whoa, whoa, He's not a dumbass, clearly. Yeah, okay. House <laughs> is able to translate this yeah. whole book and be able to warp time back and yeah. forth. When and this one guy that was there, who knows how long, because I said he was like a child when he got there. And he grew up in that monastery. Yeah. He was broken and everything. And he can't figure it out. But he's supposed to be a parallel to Doctor Strange as far as what the, whatever her name was. The not ancient the, one. The ancient one. Uh, that when the ancient one, she identifies like, oh, wait, he, he could be, Doctor Strange could end up going down this path just like whatever, Eyeshadow Man. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm forgetting the names. Helix or something. Yeah. So, um, so he's supposed to be just as smart and, and advancing just as quick. And that was, I'm glad you brought that up. That was one of my issues was if he, if the a proper amount of time had passed between when he first got there and to where he progressed to in the training, why didn't anything happen during that, that time gap? Very conveniently, like he, maybe it was just a week. Maybe he's that crazy good that <laughs> that it was just a week so it, nothing else happened but i thought it was maybe like a couple of years or at least a year so the bad guys didn't have enough time to start decoding some of this shit and figuring out their own stuff so that that was one of the things that bothered me where it, the the concept of time seems to be failing a lot of comic book movies yeah the, right. the editing when they hit the i i don't put anything on the well it could be the directors it could be the script but it seems like when a lot of these movies lately have been getting to the editing room, they have been getting butchered. Yeah. I mean, so, and then the concept of time and travel and everything in movies have just been lost. Mm -hmm. um, that, that time traveling shit and, uh, and just flying all over the countries and stuff in Civil War, Batman v Superman, who knows how fucking the, 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 you get a little bit of a time thing, but it's just back and forth. You know, Wonder Woman's teleporting to fucking... The airport and back in less than 10 minutes and shit. Yeah, but there's a chance she could fly. Yeah. Not true. Yeah. Anyways, not to get into that. But yeah, the concept of time, that the hour, now it's less, that Superman had was a very long hour, whatever the fuck it was. 30 oh, minutes. Yeah. 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, 30 minutes. You, that? you had 30 minutes when you got here. <laughs> no, oh, it's, no. Now it's less. No, it was an hour. It was an hour. Yeah, yeah it was an hour. <laughs> you know what I'm saying that. You had an hour when you came here. And now it's less than whatever. And, I think he just says, and now it's less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he flies away. <laughs> Overall, the movie was good. It was okay. I, I, I enjoyed it. I don't know. I might watch it in 3D for that 3D experience. I doubt I will ever buy this on DVD um, or any Blu-ray or anything. If it's on cable, I don't even know if I would watch it then. Yeah. Um, the 3D thing does intrigue me a little bit. So... I liked about half the things in the movie. So initially that would want me to give it a five. I, but the things I did like in the movie, I really, really, really did like. Mm -hmm. So my score for Dr. Strange is going to be 6.5 out of 10. All right. Uh, so I, I was a little bit more generous. I, I guess the, the points that I really, that I liked, I, I really liked the emotion that I could, could get out of the movie. Uh, so I ended up giving it around like seven, 7.2. Okay. Uh, as as uh, I C plus, I guess. Yeah, I, so it, was, it was it was middle of the road. I I really wanted more out of this, especially with the trailers. I I went into this just expecting so much more, so different from from in years past, and ended up getting the same thing. And it's kind of a disappointment. I, I I I will continue to watch Marvel movies. I do. Oh, yeah. I, I I love how they're piecing together the entire universe. The the post credit scenes are, are pretty cool, and you know that was cool that uh, now he'll be in in Thor Ragnarok, um, so they, they they do a good job of of that, and they're they're fun for the most part. I just I wanted more. I I really wanted more out of this movie. After watching this though, I feel like they wanted Doctor Strange in this universe because they want to do something uh, with his powers. They want to do something with magic, cosmic dimensions, something like that. And so they made this origin movie, but it was filler. Yeah. It, it felt like it was filler ultimately. But that's how most... It was just to introduce him and then bring him into the MCU. Mm -hmm. That's how most of their movies seem to be, is especially lately. Well, no, no. Ant-Man was pretty on its own. I didn't feel like he was going to really be part of the Avengers. Yeah. yeah. That, I, that was him and a story between him and his daughter and, you know, and trying to get out of jail. They totally bought it all back in Civil War. Oh. Yeah, okay, maybe I'm just more thinking of like a kind of Iron Man 3, um, right. Winter Soldier 
Winter Soldier was... Civil, Civil War was technically Captain America 3, or was Captain America Civil War. <laughs> so, but but we just refer to it as Civil War. As, yeah, as it, a, no, Avengers. that was Avengers 2.5. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, all that was. Right. So it, it just kind of seems like a lot of them are starting, they're they're trying just to, okay, here's the the base level, and it's just to set up for the rest of this other stuff. Well, that's what they got. That's what you do as a as a a universe. You know, they did that with Batman versus Superman. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. They did a little bit with with Suicide Squad. A a little bit, not a lot. So we'll we'll see what happens. I mean, Wonder Woman, I'm sure, is going to be a big building block. That's what happens when you have these connected universes. Right. I don't. I don't mind that. But when it's pretty empty and super generic, Mm -hmm. that's that's the problem. Is uh, I feel like this was a filler. This was just in there to introduce this character as fast as possible. And get him on the Avengers team. Um, yeah, that that's what it felt like. They wanted him to do something. We'll find out probably later on in the Infinity Wars Part One or whatever the hell they're calling it now. <laughs> we'll probably find out then what they wanted to use him in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they want him for something. That's pretty obvious, and that's why this movie was made. Yeah. Oh, um, well, maybe that's he'll be the the ultimate leg up for the battle against Thanos or something. Who knows? I heard I heard someone make the joke like if he can just reverse time all the time, uh, you know, reverse time. Well, why is everybody worried about Thanos? He can just do the same thing to Thanos. <laughs> I heard that joke. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. But Thanos will probably kill him before. Yeah, <laughs> before he can do that. He's not gonna just stand there and stare at him. Or and... he can reverse time, and Civil War never happened. Oh, so they're not they're not arguing. Yeah, he could save everybody, man. <laughs> I mean, eventually, though, that is the time stone for the Affinity Gauntlet. So, mm-hmm. obviously, he's going to get that. Yeah. I mean, the, the the one thing about these Affinity Stones is that you know, ultimately, Marvel's not going to be like... He's not going to be able to have all fucking st- all the stones. Not sure if it's five or six. Somewhere around there. He's not going to have all five or six stones. He's going to have all five or six stones eventually. Right. <laughs> he's going to fill up the glove. You know, <laughs> he's going to fill it up. So, obviously, he's going to get this fucking stone. Vision's going to be dead eventually because he's going to rip that fucking stone out of his head. <laughs> So we still got one more that's left. I can't. I think it's like the Soul Gym. I think I heard someone say that's left. Mm-hmm. I don't know where that's going to be. James Gunn already said Guardians of the Galaxy Two isn't going to have um, a stone. Oh, okay. So I'm not quite sure. I wonder how that ties in then. I, I have no idea. They were like, he, he said it's not going to have a stone, and Thanos isn't going to be in the movie at all. Like not even like before where you were sitting in a chair the whole time. Weird. Like he's not going to. Like he's doing his best to avoid being part of the MCU as yeah. much as possible. Um, That's pretty smart. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it makes it a better movie, I think. Yeah. Overall, we did like this movie. We're not shitting on it. Yeah. We we. we I mean, it was an okay movie. Like we said, go, if you like the previous Marvel movies, you'll probably like this. this yeah, is probably absolutely. right up your alley. For us, for these particular jokes, they were very obvious to us. Mm-hmm. And these are just our it's opinions. Our humor. Yeah. You know, this that's is, ultimately what this is. Yeah, it's just all opinion yeah. based, and everyone has their their own tastes when going into a movie. And uh, you know, like you said, if if this is if the Marvel movies you absolutely love every single one of them, then you're gonna love this. That, right. That, that's that's exactly how it goes, and you know, they it sticks to pretty much uh, the same stuff. But like you said, the the jokes for for me and for you were you can see them coming a mile away and didn't really add too much to right. the to the experience of the movie. Right. Now, if anything, it took you out of the movie. Yeah. A lot. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it just kind of, yeah, it just kind of like, well, damn, that sucks. Like, that's where this is going. They rather get right. a Beyonce joke than explain the dark realm. Or, right. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's just, it's just moments like that. It feels like there are some jokes that worked, but I would say probably like 80, 85% of the jokes yeah. didn't work for us yeah. in particular. Yeah. Or for me, I don't know you. Yeah, saying. yeah same. Okay, okay. <laughs> we, we sat back to, uh, back in the corner next to each other, not laughing a whole lot. Yeah, just and wanting then, like, okay, no, we'll move to the next part. I, I want to know more about yeah. this. <laughs> and then the one part we did laugh, no one else laughed. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that shows our sick joke. Yeah. Throw someone in, in that, <laughs> throw someone in aquarium. in an aquarium, <laughs> and we start busting <laughs> up laughing. Oh, yeah, it just that happens to us a lot. It seems like it does when we were laughing about fucking Jesse Eisenberg and Batman versus Superman. Come to my office. Yeah. Yes, he takes two steps, steps to the right. my office. We're yeah. like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> laughing our asses off, and no one else is fucking laughing. <laughs> so I guess that's just, oh, I guess that's uh, just our humor. sense yep. of humor. Well, thank you again for listening to our review of Doctor Strange. Please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube page and comment. Let us know. I'm sure people are going to want to comment on us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Let us have it. Yep. I'm, we're, we're, 
uh, open to the the keyboard war. <laughs> I will win. I can tell you that. <laughs> I can get very, very dirty. <laughs> Make sure you check out our podcast at Comic Movie Marks on iTunes and in the Google Play Store. We have our retro review of Iron Man before this came out, the mm-hmm. beginning of the cinematic universe, Doctor Strange being the 14th movie in the Marvel Universe now. We did our retro review on Iron Man. We got our segment laces out. Check out our YouTube channel for our Let's Plays. Those are awesome. Check them out. Yep, got a whole lot going on. Follow us on all social media, Facebook, Twitter, and the Instagram. You can follow us along for the entire NFL season during our Laces Out segment. We put up our our predictions and our scores at the end of beginning and end of each week. And then we cry at the end of the week. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Sob into a pillow. <laughs> so, so follow along. Eat a tub of ice cream. <laughs> In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.